Insulin checkoff will probably be the hardest one for you as students. Uh, the things that you're going to be checked off on is how do I draw up two different insulins? What are hypoglycemic symptoms and what is a hypoglycemic protocol? What is the onset, peak, and duration of various insulins? How are renal patients different? And how do I know what uh, sliding scale to use? At St. Mary's, they use a sliding scale that looks something like this. And it's made, it's with Lyspro insulin. And it'll give you a protocol to go if their blood sugar was 210 and they're on a low scale, they get two units of Lyspro. Uh, we have a low, medium, and high scale, uh, which if it's above 400, then you need to be sure you let your primary nurse know. Now, Mrs. Herrera is going to talk to you about the VAS protocol on insulins. So, VAS uh, has a, a written protocol that they have separately. They still have to have doctor's orders to deal with it. Um, but usually they do a, a protocol for a corrective, which is going to be by way of... Uh, the way you know that is by what you get in a finger stick and then they're going to do carbs so they have you count the number of carbs the um, patient has eaten normally the the carb count is on the meal ticket so every time you have someone on a carb count you'd have to save the meal ticket so that's something to pay attention to whenever you're going to clinicals you have a patient that has that you always want to make sure and check on that meal ticket because that'll say um, so there it'll also tell you in the orders what insulin you're usually using normally it's going to be Nobelog. Um, so again we also have and all your orders are going to have the the um, formula on there and so your finger stick um, you're going to be using uh, again you're going to be using what you get by the finger stick and you'll follow that formula and then the carbs you'll follow that so generally you just need to know that the two hospitals have something different and we'll go over those with you when you're at the hospital as well. So it is something that you need to know for checkoffs, but you'll also, we'll go over it before you do anything in the hospital. So, All right. Now for giving an insulin, we, we're going to use regular insulin and NPH, which regular insulin is a little bit, is an intermediate action and an NPH is a long-acting insulin. Uh, and we also have two different sizes of syringes. This one is 100 units, which means it will hold 100 units of insulin. And units, by the way, are different than mils or tenths of a mil. So make sure anytime you're going to do insulin, you have an orange insulin cap syringe. That denotes it's an insulin syringe. And then we have a 50 unit. Anything that's less than 50 units, use the smaller insulin syringe. It's graduated in each little graduation point is a unit. On the 100, mil, 100 unit one, each little graduation point is two units. So if you needed 53 units or say 43 units, it would be harder to pull it up in a 100 unit uh, syringe. So, we're going to do clear to cloudy because someday you might have to mix the two different insulins. And you do not ever want the cloudy, which is the long-acting NPH, in a regular insulin bottle. And NPH is called cloudy, but you need to... Uh, roll it between your palms to uh, mix all the suspension so it's all nice and mixed. They're uh, multi-dose vials, so clean the tops. And these vials are good for 28 days. So always check your expiration date and it should be written on when it was opened. And it's good for 28 days, not refrigerated. Okay, we're going to 
draw up 50 units of air. We're going to inject 30 units of air into the cloudy. You're going to take it out and put the 20 units of air into the clear. And then you're going to turn it up and pull up 20 units of regular insulin. This is where you're going to have to ask somebody, what do you see? And they're going to say, well, I see 20 units of regular that expires in 29 days or 28 days. You can take it out, but now you have to be very careful. You don't want to inject any of your regular into the MPH. So you would draw up your 30 units of MPH and leave it in and say, what do you see? And they'll say, well, I see you've got 50 units and that's MPH. And hopefully the same person that is doing your first one will be your second one, but that may not always be true. You're going to take it to the patient's room. We're going to clean whatever site they want it in, and they are real particular about where they want it. Pinch, inject, give it to them, and then just pat it. We're not going to aspirate, and we're not going to massage it. Activate your sharps, make sure they're not bleeding, and then make them comfortable. Okay, another insulin shot that you might be giving is called Lantus, which is a long-acting uh, insulin. The difference in long-acting and, you, say, your regular MPH is Lantus cannot be mixed with any other insulin, so it needs to be given separately. And a lot of uh, diabetics use insulin, and actually there can be a lot of units. Many of them get like 70 units a day. Uh, it's given the same way, but there is no onset peak or peak of Lantus. It is a duration of 24 hours. And so it's slowly absorbed over that 24 hours. And that is the reason that we use Lantus. Uh, since we have Lantus and Detamir, Lebamir, or Detamir, which is uh, both names, we don't use the MPH nearly as much. We're using Lantus more often.